Hey everybody, welcome to the Nth Design channel. My name is Nate, and today we're going to be talking about Vagrant. Vagrant is a tool that helps you automate the process of building virtual machines inside your development computer. I'm going to be using Vagrant to install Ubuntu 14.04 on my laptop. Uh, with Ubuntu, then, I can develop a website all on my laptop here and test it on my laptop without having to have uh, actual server hardware to test my website on. Vagrant can control a variety of virtualization tools like VirtualBox. And we're going to be using Vagrant to automate the process of installing Ubuntu on VirtualBox on a Mac. So before we get going in this uh, tutorial, you'll need to install VirtualBox and a text editor. Uh, I'm going to be using Atom by GitHub. It's a fantastic free editor. So make sure you get both uh, VirtualBox and a text editor installed before you follow along. We'll start our tutorial today by installing Vagrant. We'll go to Google. We can type install Vagrant. Uh, and we're going to see a couple links here. We're going to go to Download Vagrant by HashiCorp. Uh, so here I'm on a Mac. I'm going to use the universal 32 and 64-bit download. Click that. Uh, now I actually already have this downloaded to uh, save some time in the video. So let me minimize my web browser. Here I have my Vagrant 1.8.1 disk image. Double-click that. We'll open up my image and here's the vagrant package file. So we'll say continue. We'll allow it to install in the default location. Put in my credentials here. And here we go. Once vagrant is installed, you'll now have a vagrant executable in slash user local bin. And uh, that's what we're going to be using later on. So Vagrant is now installed, but what do we do with it? Well, to use Vagrant, we have to create a Vagrant file. And we have to put that file inside a project folder where our project is going to live. So, like I said earlier, uh, this tutorial is really the first in a large series where I want to walk through how to build a modern PHP web application. Uh, and so, I'm going to need a folder in which that project will live. And I'm going to put that right on my desktop for now. So, I'll make a new folder, and I'm just going to call it to do app. That's going to be the name of my application. It's going to be a modern to do list application. We're going to call it to do app.com. This is our project folder. And inside that folder, we're going to put our vagrant file. I'm going to open the Atom text editor, and when I do, I'll have an empty window. I want to make sure I have a nice big font size so everyone can see, and we're going to create our Vagrant file. The very first thing I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to go to File, Save, and I need to put this on my desktop in that todoapp.com project folder, and it's going to be named Vagrant File. No extension, just the words Vagrant File, and I'll hit Save. So what does a Vagrant file have in it? We're going to try to create the most bare-bones Vagrant file imaginable. You can find many, many examples of Vagrant files online. In fact, Vagrant itself will create one for you if you type Vagrant init inside your terminal when you're inside your project folder, but that gives you a lot of options that you don't necessarily need, and I want to try to give you the, the most plain options possible to understand what's happening here. So what does a Vagrant file look like? Well, it starts with the word Vagrant, and then we're going to type dot configure parentheses two in quotes, and then do config. Uh, some of you may recognize that this looks like Ruby, and it is. So we're going to take that config variable and we're going to add some properties to it. Config.vm.box equals 
Ubuntu slash trusty 64. This first line is telling Vagrant to configure the virtual machine using Ubuntu 14.04 and it gets that ISO it gets the installers for Ubuntu by going out to HashiCorp's Atlas service and it looks for a box labeled Ubuntu slash Trusty64. So it actually downloads the uh, operating system installer for you the first time you run this and it keeps that box around. It's This is what makes Vagrant so, so powerful. The next thing we're going to do is configure the host name. So config.vm.hostname equals and we're going to call this to do app.com. So when Vagrant runs, it's going to put that host name right into the operating system of the Ubuntu box so we don't have to set that manually. Again, big time saver. The next thing we have to do is tell Vagrant how to handle networking and the IP address on our virtual machine. We're going to set up a private network. Private networking will allow us to run more than one virtual machine on our development laptop. That's important if we want to eventually have a web server and a separate database server both running as virtual machines inside our laptop, our development box. Um, private networking sets this up. It creates sort of like a, a, a VLAN or a, or a firewalled network inside your computer. And we have to now pass in an IP address. Uh, I'm going to use 172.18.10.10. How did I decide on that address? Uh, you can actually go out to Google and just look up private IP ranges and uh, you're going to see all the different ranges available. There are the 24-bit uh, range, the 10.0 range, the 172 range, and the 192 range. I simply picked the one that I'm not using on my home network and that I'm also not using on my work network. Uh, that way there are no conflicts, so I'm using the 172 range. So we end our very simple Vagrant file with the word end save this again and we can minimize Atom that's it we have a vagrant file now what do we do with it if I go to my terminal and I'm going to enlarge the font so everyone can read here I'm going to navigate to my to do dot or to do app dot com project directory so cd tilde slash desktop slash to do app.com and if I do an ls, if I get the directory listing there I can see my vagrant file and now this is where the true power of vagrant is I can type vagrant up and when I do and press enter it's going to go out and download Ubuntu 14.04 that's what it's telling me here default progress 0% um, it looks like it's going to take 15 or more minutes to grab this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and I will come back when that progress bar is nearing 100%. And here we're nearing the end of our download. Uh, just again, what we're downloading is a vagrant box. Uh, this box is sort of like a uh, ready to run uh, prepackaged version of Ubuntu. Uh, so this is the only time we're going to need to download this box and we can create vagrant files uh, for any number of projects on this development machine and we'll never have to download this vagrant box, uh, this Ubuntu 1404 box again. And that's one of the powerful features of vagrant is that you're downloading this uh, instance of the operating system once and you never have to do that again. So here, uh, now that the box is downloaded, it's going through the rest of the process, uh, setting our IP address, setting the host name, uh, adding a user account for Vagrant to use, 
these are all the things that Vagrant does for us in the background. So we'll just give this a few seconds to finish, and in the end, uh, we're going to be returned to our command prompt. And so here we are, back at the command prompt. What if we wanted to log into our new Vagrant box? Uh, our Ubuntu uh, 14.04 server is running. Oh, one quick thing. Um, how do we know that it's running? We can type Vagrant status here, and it will tell us Aha, the VM is running. To stop this VM, you can run Vagrant Halt. So this is kind of nice to see. The other thing we can type is Vagrant Global Status, and it will show us all of the different virtual machines, Vagrant machines, running on our local uh, computer here. But I'm going to clear my output. I want to log into our Ubuntu 14.04 machine. And I can do that by typing Vagrant SSH. And that takes care of SSHing into our machine. And here we are. We are inside our Vagrant box uh, on our local computer. And just to show you what that means, if I type ls la um, slash, so here we have our standard Ubuntu directory structure, uh, bin, boot, dev, Etsy, uh, and we are inside our Ubuntu virtual machine. So in the next few videos, we're going to show you how to install services, things like PHP, Nginx, MySQL, on this Ubuntu machine, uh, and, and then we'll take you furthermore into the development of our to-do list application, uh, and it's going to be a great uh, series of videos. As always, thank you for joining me today on this adventure. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button. You can find me on Twitter and in various other corners of the internet with the username Nth Design. That's N-T-H-D-E-S-I-G-N. Now, get out there, build something, fix something, and make sure to have fun doing it.